Good morning boys. Welcome to today's session. Let me have a quick recap on the topics what you have learnt in the previous classes. First, we have learnt about force. A force is a push or pull that acts on an object. It can cause a resting object to move or a moving object to change direction. Next, we have learnt about inertia. Let me define what is inertia. The inherent property of a body to resist any change in its state of rest or the state of uniform motion unless it is influenced upon by an external unbalanced force is known as inertia. There are three types of inertia. Inertia of rest, inertia of motion and inertia of direction. First one, inertia of rest. An athlete runs some distance before jumping because all of a sudden the athlete can't change his state from rest to the moving position. So, before taking a jump, he is running for some extent and then he tend to jump. This will help him to jump longer and higher. Second one, inertia of motion. For example, when you travel in a bus, the driver applies brake. While applying sudden brake, the bus stops its motion, but the people who are sitting inside the bus, they are continued to be in motion. So, they tend to lean forward. Last one is inertia of direction. When you make a sharp turn while driving a car, you tend to lean sideways. This is because of inertia of direction. This inertia is explained by Newton's first law of motion. Newton's first law of motion is also known as law of inertia. Next, you are going to study about Newton's first law of motion. The first law of motion states every body continues to be in its state of rest or the state of uniform motion along a straight line unless it is acted upon by some external force. We can relate this law with our day-to-day -day life. We never try to do our homework on our own unless a teacher or a parent compels to do the homework. Then only we will try to do. This we can have it as an example for Newton's first law. Next is Newton's second law. Newton's second law tells us how to calculate the force. That is, it gives us the formula to calculate the force. Newton's second law states that the force acting on a body is directly proportional to the rate of change of linear momentum of the body and the change in momentum takes place in the direction of force. This is a very important question. Deduce the equation of force using Newton's second law of motion. Next, I am going to derive the formula for force using this Newton's second law of motion. Consider an object of mass m moving with the initial velocity u and after some time its velocity changes into v. So the initial velocity is u and the final velocity is v. You have already learned how to calculate momentum. Momentum is nothing but product of mass into velocity. So the initial momentum is calculated by m into u because its initial momentum mass into initial velocity. So once again initial momentum is equal to m into u. The same like final momentum of the object is equal to mass into final velocity that is m into v. Therefore change in momentum is equal to final momentum minus initial momentum that is mv minus mu. Rate of change of momentum means the quantity which changes by time that is 
defined by the term called rate. Here, momentum changes by time. So, it can be stated as rate of change of momentum. So, rate of change of momentum is equal to mv minus mu by t. Substitute the same in Newton's second law of motion. We have force is proportional to rate of change of momentum. F is proportional to mv minus mu by t. Since m is common, take it out, m into v minus u by t. We already know change in velocity by time is equal to acceleration. So, instead of v minus u by t, substitute acceleration. So, force is proportional to m into a. When we change the proportionality constant into equality symbol, we have to introduce a constant that is nothing but k. So, f is equal to k into m into a. Here, k is called proportionality constant. If you take k value as 1, then force value will be changed into f is equal to m into a. Newton's second law gives us the formula how to calculate the force. Newton's second law is also known as quantitative definition of force. Next, we are going to learn about units of force. The SI unit of force is Newton. It is named after Sir Isaac Newton. While writing the symbol, you have to use capital N. While writing Newton in full form, you have to write with small letter n. This is very important because we have to follow SI rules and regulations. In SI system, the unit of force is Newton. In CGS system, the unit of force is dyne. Next, we will see the definition of 1 Newton and 1 dyne. 1 Newton is nothing but the amount of force required for a body of mass 1 kg to produce an acceleration of 1 meter per second square. 1 dyne is also defined as the amount of force required for a body of mass 1 gram produces an acceleration of 1 centimeter per second square. In CGS system, the distance is measured in the unit of centimeter. The mass is measured in the unit of gram. Next, we are going to learn about impulsive force and impulse. We come across these forces in our day-to-day -day life. First, I will define what is impulsive force. Impulsive force is a greater force acting for a very short time. I will repeat, impulsive force is a higher magnitude force or greater force acting for a very short time. Example, cricket bat hitting a ball. Next is impulse. Impulse is nothing but the impact produced because of the impulsive force is nothing but impulse. For example, when somebody slaps you, he is applying a greater force within a short period of time. That is known as impulsive force. Due to that slapping, you may get some changes in your face. That impact is known as impulse. So, the impulse can be calculated by the product of force into time. It is represented by J. J is equal to F into t. We can also define impulse as change in momentum that is final momentum minus initial momentum. J is equal to m into v minus m into u. J means impulse, m means mass of the body, v means final velocity, u means initial velocity. The SI unit for impulse is kilogram meter per 
second. Impulse is also a vector quantity. Next is what is moment and couple. If anyone asks what is the turning moment in your life, what you will say? The moment which changes your life's direction. That is nothing but moment. The same like here also the moment is the force causes an object to turn. Then this turning effect is called moment. Listen carefully. When a force causes an object to turn, this turning effect is called moment. For example, a person is sitting on a seesaw. Now the seesaw turns from its position. This is nothing but a moment is applied on it. Next, the type of moments. There are two types of moments. One is clockwise moment. Another one is anti-clockwise moment. Because of the applying force, if the object turns in a clockwise direction, that is known as clockwise moment. While applying a force, if the object turns in anti-clockwise direction, that is known as anti-clockwise moment. By convention, clockwise moments are taken as negative and anti-clockwise moments are taken as negative. Positive. Next, how to calculate the moment? Moment is calculated by the formula force into perpendicular distance between the force and the pivot. Pivot is nothing but the point from which the force is applied. In symbols, moment equal to F into D. The unit for moment is Newton meter. Now let's see what is couple. First already we have learnt what is moment. Moment means when a force causes a turning effect. Then the turning effect is called moment. Here couple means two equal and opposite forces acting on the same object will make the object to turn. That forces are called couple. Once again I will repeat. Couple is nothing but two equal and opposite forces which is acting on the same object is called as couple. For couple, resultant equals zero that tend to produce rotation. Example, turning a tap, opening a water bottle or the examples of couple. While opening a water bottle, we have to use two fingers. One finger will give upward force and another one will give downward force. This is example for couple. But for moment, examples are opening of a window, opening a door, opening a book. These are the examples for moment. Because here one end of the object is fixed. We are giving a single force on the another end. That type of force is known as moment. Hope you understand what is moment and couple. Now we will see the differences between moment and couple. Moment is produced by a single force. Couple is produced by two equal and opposite forces. In moment, the resultant force will make the object to move in the direction of force. In couple, the resultant force is zero because couple means two equal and opposite forces. So, the resultant force is zero. Here, in moment, the force will move the body and rotate the body. But, in couple, the body will not move but it will rotate. Example for moment is opening and closing a door. Example for couples are opening and closing of water bottle, rotating the steering wheel. Now we will see the turning effects produced by moment and couple. The turning effect produced by a moment is called moment of force or torque. 
the turning effect produced by couple is called moment of couple in both the cases the result is rotation but if the rotating effect is produced by a single force it is known as moment of force the rotating effect is produced by couple of forces then it is known as moment of couple next we'll see the principle of moments is it possible to balance an object of different weight yes of course it is possible by applying the principle of moments we can see how to make an object to be in equilibrium position according to principle of moments in equilibrium the total clockwise moments must be equal to total anti clockwise moments then how can i make these clockwise moments and anti clockwise moments to be equal that too in the absence of external force by adjusting the distance between the object and the point of rotation that is nothing but the principle of moments i'll repeat principle of moments is defined as in equilibrium the total clockwise moments must be equal to the total anti clockwise moments next we'll see about newton's third law of motion newton's third law states every action has an equal and opposite reaction but action and reaction never acts on same bodies it will act on different bodies for example if a ball applies a force on the table the table applies equal and opposite force on the ball this is newton's third law of motion now we'll see some examples for newton's third law of motion first one is the recoiling of gun when you fire a bullet the gun recoils backward and the bullet is moving forward the gun equalizes this forward action by moving backward another example i can say when birds fly they push the air downwards with the wings and the air pushes the bird upwards another example when a person swims he pushes the water using the hands backwards and the water pushes the swimmer in the forward direction last example is the rocket propulsion it is a very important application of newton's third law of motion when the fuel burns the gas is coming out is an action because of this action the rocket moves upward direction this is nothing but reaction now we are going to learn about a very important application of newton's third law that is law of conservation of momentum law of conservation of momentum states that if no external force is acting on a system then the total momentum will remains constant that is in the absence of external force the total momentum before collision is equal to the total momentum after collision now let us prove the law of conservation of linear momentum for this consider two bodies a and b having different masses m1 and m2 let their initial velocities be u1 and u2 that is body a moving with initial velocity u1 and body b moving with initial velocity u2 consider u1 is slightly greater than u2 so what will happen both will collide with each other after collision the object a will move with the force fa towards the object b and the object b also moves with the force fb towards a after colliding with each other its velocity changes from u1 to v1 for the first body and the velocity changes from u2 to v2 for the second body so now the initial velocities are u1 and u2 
and the final velocities are v1 and v2. Now we are going to apply Newton's second law. You know f is equal to m into a. a is acceleration. Acceleration is nothing but final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. So it becomes f is equal to m into v minus u by t. Applying the law on f a it becomes f a is equal to m into v1 minus u1 by t. Applying on fb, fb becomes fb is equal to m2 into v2 minus u2 by t. Using these two expressions, we are going to apply Newton's third law of motion. According to Newton's third law, both the forces are equal but it is in opposite direction. That is F A is equal to F B. Since it is in the opposite direction, we can write it as F A is equal to minus F B. On substituting both the equations, we will get M1 into V1 minus U1 by T is equal to minus M2 v2 minus u2 by t. Now we will cancel t on both sides. Multiply m1 and m2 on both sides. So the expression will be m1 into v1 minus m1 into u1 is equal to minus m2 into v2 plus the minus and minus it will become plus. So plus m2 into u2. Now we can write as m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to m1 u1 plus m2 into u2. The above equation confirms in the absence of an external force the algebraic sum of the momentum after collision is numerically equal to the algebraic sum of the momentum before collision. Hence, the law of conservation of linear momentum is proved. Next is rocket propulsion. Propulsion of rocket is based on the law of conservation of linear momentum as well as Newton's third law of motion. Rockets are filled with fuel in the propellant tank. The fuel may be either solid or liquid. When the rocket is fired, the fuel is burnt and hot gas is ejected with the high speed producing huge momentum that we have seen while launching the rockets. You can see hot gases ejected with high speed from the nozzle. So it will produce huge momentum. To balance this momentum an equal and opposite reaction force is produced in the combustion chamber which makes the rocket project forward. Here Newton's third law is applied. Since the fuel is burning continuously the mass of the rocket gradually decreases since there is no external force acting on it. The linear momentum of the system is conserved. As the fuel is burning continuously, the mass of the rocket decreases with the altitude which results in gradual increase in velocity. At one stage, it is sufficient to escape from the gravitational pull of the earth. This velocity is called escape velocity. This is a very important paragraph question.